Hello, I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and thank you for joining me today. We have been looking at God's provisions for uh, stability for the Christian, and that first involved um, understanding the sin nature, and then from the sin nature, the struggle with the sin nature, the, the groaning that goes on because we, are, we deal with the sin nature and because we operate within a fallen world. And uh, as we continue to press through these, we've been seeing how Christ is interceding for us. Nothing can separate us from that love. And uh, yesterday we went through this, this list that, that uh, Paul compiles in verse 35, who can separate us from the love of Christ, can affliction, anguish, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword. He's going to present us with another list beginning in verse 38, which we will save until next week. But while the psalmist, and he makes this comparison we saw yesterday, he makes this comparison to the psalmist who is talking about Israel under discipline and thinking we've done nothing to deserve this. Uh, I think the psalmist actually didn't know better, but they're, but they're looking at their life the way many of the Israelis did, as though, what did we do to deserve this? And they did do something. And by a similar token, then we might, and I believe this is why he uses this this expression, this cathos down here, as a comparative, saying it's kind of our situation is comparable that we look at these things and we might think, oh, well, we're under discipline, or we have been, uh, we've we've gotten in trouble. That's why we're going, and we're not. And we looked at that the other day. We'll go back and look at that video from a couple of days ago that where it's not because. Uh, we've done something wrong that we're under undergoing those things. It's part of God's plan that we go through these things through which God's glorified and through which we grow. And so then he makes this this statement, no, in contrast to in contrast to the fact that we're like sheep before the slaughter, that's the way the psalmist looks at us and we can feel like we're just sheep being led to the slaughter. Paul says, no, in all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. And this word victorious is uh, uh, the verb nikao, but it has this preposition, a prefix to it, huper. We would maybe bring it across in English saying hyper. So we are hyper victorious or we hyper con conquer. We are hyper winners, ex uh, exceptional winners through the one loving us. No, what ways are we winners? I mean, we just got done with that list. You go, I, I, don't, I don't feel like a winner sometimes, but but there's things that I think we can say. And we can go back first. It starts with Jesus Christ in John 16. Jesus Christ in John 16, he says, these things I have spoken to you. And what he's spoken to them, and this goes right along there, um, where he uh, tells them, verse 32, behold, an hour is coming and already has come for you to be scattered each to his own home and to leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. And this and other things that Jesus has told them about the way they will be treated, the things that will happen after, not only when he's arrested and then taken to be crucified, but even after he has ascended and the church has begun, looking at the fact that there's going to be this animosity that the world has towards the believer, he says, I've spoken these things to you so that in me you may have peace. In other words, you're not going to find peace in this world. Yes, momentarily once in a while, but you're not going to find real lasting peace in the world. You're only going to find it in the world. You will have tribulation. You're going to have this adversity. You're going to have this pressure, but take courage. Be of good cheer. I have overcome or I have defeated. I am the victor of the world. And he hasn't even gone to the cross yet. And yet he uses over here in the Greek, a perfect tense just to indicate with great vividness that from his point of view, the way he has responded to the world during his life and the way in which he is going to deal with the world as he goes to the cross, he's already defeated it. He's already the winner. We go over to the Gospel of John. In 1 John chapter 2, he makes a statement to the young men, he says in verse 13, we'll put it in the middle of the verse, I'm writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. See, the evil one, I believe in this context, has put a lot of pressure on these believers, pressure for them to give in, pressure for them to change the way they think about things. And some of that pressure has come in the form of some antichrists 
uh, that are in the midst uh, of these people. Um, and so as he's talking about these, these antichrists in here, he says, no, you've already overcome them. You've already defeated them. And like the word Jesus used, John uses here, again, a perfect tense. You have overcome with the result that you remain an overcomer. You don't listen to what they say. Modern, modern case in point. Um, there are a lot of people in the world that either deny that Jesus Christ is risen or deny that he's absolutely God. There's lots of atheists, agnostics, even people that are religious that may in some sense believe, sort of believe in God. They don't believe Christ is risen. Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe he's risen, not bodily. And then there are those that don't believe he's God. There's a lot of people historically, they think Jesus is just a man. And we've got people around us where we live, Mormons, that they believe that Jesus is a God from gods, but they don't believe that he's absolutely God. They're antichrists, just like Jehovah's Witnesses and just like the unsaved world out there. They're unbelievers because they don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible. They believe in a Jesus, These all these people people do. And some of them just outright don't believe in Jesus at all when you think about these people. And yet the young men, they are victorious over those people because they have believed. Over in 1 John chapter 4, as he again talks about these, these some of these uh, antichrists, he says, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses or agrees Jesus Christ has come in flesh with the result that he still is. This one is from God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus, that is having come in flesh with the result that he still is, is not from God. This one is the spirit of Antichrist, of which you've heard that is coming and he already is in the world. They're already, they, we don't have to wait for Antichrist to show up. We're surrounded by those kind of people every day in the world, no matter where you are. You, however, are from God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. What does he mean that you've overcome them? You've believed, and he says this in 1 John chapter 5. He says, because whatever or whoever has been born from God conquers or overcomes. Where all these words I've had circled are this, this versions of this word that, John's, that Paul's using in Romans 8. Conquers or is victorious over the world. What? This is the victory that has conquered or is victorious over the world, our faith. In other words, when the rest of the world says, how can you really believe that faith alone in Jesus Christ and his death, how can you believe that that's enough? And you say it is. Jesus did it all. There's nothing else I can do. All kinds of other religions around the world, they all want you to be, they all want you to go get baptized. They want you to do good works. They want you to perform well. They believe in works because they don't have this kind of faith. They're unbelievers in the end. And you and I, as believers, we've overcome the world because we've believed in Jesus Christ despite all their pressure. So, dealt with the world and their press against faith, Satan and his press against faith. And the last one I want to look at is in 1 Corinthians 15, where we have this future to look forward to that he says um, in verse 54, but when this perishable will have put on imperishable and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is literally the sin nature. And the power or the strength of the sin nature is the law, but thanks to God who gives. And this word that he uses here, this is a present participle, meaning this is something, and I believe in the context, that God continues to do. God continue to, is continuing to work out in believers, giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's still doing it right now. And that's with regard to the sin nature and with regard to the future. And if you go back to Romans 8 and you stop and you look back at this list and go, well, I go through all this hard stuff. Maybe, maybe I'm separated from God's love or maybe it could separate me. And he goes, no, you know what? We face those things. And do we all face it well all the time? No, not even the Apostle Paul faced these things all well all the time. But we can face those. And we are through our Lord Jesus Christ because we have already believed, we're victorious with regard to Satan in that regard, with regard to the world, 
and we are he's giving us victory over the sin nature the very thing that has been the starting point the starting issue for this frustration this groaning that these believers have and that's through the one who loved us who did not spare his own son but has given him all given us all things delivered his son over for us you stop and put that into your thinking and say, you know, because I have believed in Christ alone and I trust in him alone, not in my works, not in any church, not in any baptism, none of these things, just in Christ and who he is and what he's done. Because I believe that I am a victor. I am a winner because God has given me this victory. He has made us these conquerors. Despite all the stuff that we might be going through, despite all the frustrations and agony and, and such that he Paul's just concluded with. And it's not just that we're victors, but as he says here, we're superior victors. That's crazy to stop and think in the midst of our groaning and struggling with a sin nature that he would say, we are superior victors. Oh, boy, that's something to try to hard, hard to wrap your mind around. But he says, that's the way it is. And maybe in the midst of your groaning and facing your sin nature to plug into your thinking and say, because of who Christ is and what he's done, because of God's love that he's demonstrated to me in sending the son, I am a victor. And that might, should, encourage you in your thinking to have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.